Hello, it's James Arter here. I hope you're doing good. So today I wanted to run through a bit of software called UA MIDI Control. It's a really cool bit of software. It basically allows your MIDI controller to control your console software within UA's Apollo interfaces. It does so many different things, but I'm just gonna show you a bunch of the cool stuff that it does. So let's check it out. As always, if you like the video, hit the like, and if you wanna subscribe and be notified of upcoming videos, then hit the things below. And if you want some free stuff, then sign up to the mailing list below, and I'll send you an EQ cheat sheet, as well as some one-shot drum hits that you can use in your mixes. Okay, let's dive in. So this bit of software is currently only available for Mac, but there is always a chance that the developer might actually make a Windows version. Now you can get in touch with him yourself. His name is Radu Varga. I'll leave a link in the description below, but go and check out his site. There's a whole bunch of information on there um, and also loads of requests. So once you started using it, if you find out that there are lots of things that you think should be added, like little features that you think should be added, then send him a message because the more people are asked, then there's more chance of those features getting developed. Now you can, you can get the software for free free and it will do a whole bunch of the features but not all of them but all you can pay for it it doesn't cost very much it's only about 39 euros and that unlocks all of the features but if you want to try it out before you buy he also does a 14 day free trial which is currently what i'm doing so you'll see exactly what it can do on a free trial and um, but i will definitely be buying it because it's super handy okay let's have a little look so when you load up the software this is what you see as you can see here it's got a list of all of my channels just down the left. And then next to it, it shows you which parameter it's gonna be controlling. And it's so, so easy to just assign things right away. So for example, if we wanna set up some mutes on the channels or maybe solos or just, just some, of the, some of your basic operations, all we need to do is choose a channel, choose a parameter, and now we hit start and it's gonna basically be primed, ready to receive messages. And just so, just so you know, I didn't even need to install any sort of driver for my controller. It just recognizes it immediately. So let's hit start. I'm gonna go with channel two on mute, that channel. Let's move on to the next few channels just to give you a bit of an idea how quickly it is. And stop that. Now, if we look over on my console software over here, you'll see very quickly, they're all assigned to the mutes. Nice and easy, beautiful. Now, all of those basic functions can basically be controlled. So as you can see here, you've got volume, solo, pan, that's if you want to toggle between recording the onboard effects or not. You can allow it to control the preamp controls. So all of your favorites, gain, phantom power, low cut, phase and pad, and so on and so forth. So that's very handy indeed, but I'm gonna show you just a few real world examples of other things you might wanna use it for. For example, I think one of the big ones, definitely a big one for me, is setting up your cue sends. So for example, say you're in a session and you, you wanna set it up for a drum session. You wanna be able to control multiple sends all at one time, or perhaps maybe you're just on your own and you don't wanna to have to be reaching down to a mouse when you, you can easily just move around some faders. So for example, what I've set up over here on my sends, I've set up some some faders for these first four Q sends. And again, all I need to do to do that, it's super simple. Click the channel, go down to the send. In my case, I'm using Apollo Twin, so I just basically have one headphone send. And then select the gain. As you can see, I've already selected the fader. And one really clever thing about this is it tends to know what type of button or, or fader it is just from selecting it. So if I, just, if, I, if I just take that one out, for example, and I'll select it again, start. And stop. And you can choose the button type over here. So, so you can either choose knob, momentary, or toggle. Knob will be the same whether it's, whether it's a, a knob or a fader. So in this case, it's a fader, but it totally understands what it's doing. So if we look over here, look at my sense. That's the first one. Nice and easy, happy days. And I've already set up these other three as well. So for example, if you've got a few, if you've got maybe, maybe you've got a kick here and a snare and then you've got something else that needs to be louder and then there, there's your track. It's so easy to do. See there, I'm not even looking at the faders. I'm just, I'm, I'm just adjusting and I'd usually be on headphones hearing what I want to hear. 
Now you can also fine tune it if you need to. Let's just make this a little bit bigger. And this will really be dependent on what the actual parameters are asking for. So most of the time with the minimum and maximum, you can just leave them where they're already set. So I had it set just on a default, which was, which was zero to a hundred percent. So if you look at that fader, it knows that the very, very top of my fader is gonna be the very top of the parameter and then same for the bottom. So you can see that the actual position on a fader is really corresponding to the position on the console. You can adjust that if you need to, if you need to fine tune it, but most of the time it's set up so well that it will just, it will just map beautifully. Now, something else which is really, really cool is you can assign the controls to different effects or plugins. So for example, I'm gonna go over to my inserts over here and I've got a compressor inserted. There we go. Now I've set up some of the knobs to control the main parameters on the device, which is super handy if you're, again, if you're recording something by yourself, like for example, if you're recording vocals, that can be, it can be really useful to actually be able to just sing into it and then just use your hands, hands-free to, to control the parameters. I'll show you what I've got set up in this case. We've got input, output, attack, and release. Nice and easy, no fuss, hands-on and wonderful. Now I've only got that mapped to one device, but with multiple setups, you might want to set that to control effects on two different insert slots, especially if this is something that you need to be controlling on the fly. Now sticking with the effects, there's something else which I find really useful that you can control. I'd say that this is more designed if you're using it live. So for example, say you've got three different songs and they're in different tempos, or maybe they require different reverbs for each one. Well, what you can do is you can set up the different reverbs, save them as presets, and then just recall them whenever you need it. So for example, on this reverb, I've not installed any user presets, so I'll just use the ones that are there. But what I've done is within the software, I've assigned a key for different presets. So if we go to AUX1, where it's set up on, and then over here to the first insert slot, as you can see, if you've got something in the slot, it will actually show its name. It doesn't just say insert one, it now says the plugin which is loaded. And as you can see, we've got all different parameters that you can control, which is fantastic. But down the bottom here, you can choose presets. So I've set up four different keys for four different presets. So let's, let's imagine that they're four different songs. So now as I press the keys, you'll see the preset in the effect changing like so. Really handy if you need them to change in between songs really quickly. Now, the other thing you can use it to do is change the console sessions themselves. So for example, say you've set up different setups within console. One of them might be for a very simple guitar and voice that you use all the time. And the other one might be something which has lots of different plugins on and a whole bunch of different changes. From here, you can set that all up yourself. So within my console software, I've saved three different sessions and I've assigned them to keys. All we need to do is hit the key and it will change in console. So let's have a little look. As you can see, it changes them really quickly and that can be very similar to one before where you're changing between different songs and you have to have different setups going on. It might be that you're just using that to set up a whole bunch of mute groups or something. You can literally just save that as a console session and then use the keys to trigger it when you need to. Now, the other cool thing is you can use multiple MIDI devices with this. Now, as you can see here, my MIDI device is being shown as Launch Key 61 MIDI. If I had two different MIDI controllers plugged in and started to assign different controls to each, it would show the name of the device and everything that you're mapping. You can have more than one MIDI device running concurrently. So that is really, really handy, especially if you want to use the, the faders from one and, and the knobs and the buttons from another, you can totally do that. Now, the other thing you can do if your MIDI device supports it is you can change the colors. So for example, on the pads, if, if it will change different colors, depending on its state, you can cycle through these numbers and it will change to different colors just to kind of show that it's working or if it has something on a key, for example. Now it's not doing it on mine at the moment, That's but that's partly because my MIDI controller is a little bit unwell at the moment, but that is another story. But anyway, you get the general idea of that. Now, lastly, just so you can see a little bit about how easy it is to use all of this, if you want to have a quick overview on all of the settings that you've set up on this, if you just hit show all, here are all the parameters that you've set up to change. 
if you decide that you don't want to use some of these anymore, say that one, select it, reset selected, and it's gone. If you want to start again, you've got reset all there as well. And then additionally, you can save presets within the software itself. So say you wanted to have one setup which was totally linked to your drum session and then everything is mapped to all to your sends and to your and to your pans and whatnot. All you need to do is save that and then recall it whenever you like. Or perhaps you want to save one which has a whole bunch of parameters set up to multiple plugins. Well, you can do that. Just, just save that again and recall it really quickly. Now, that's a pretty much it for an overview, but I highly recommend that you go and check it out. Download the trial and start having a little bit of a play around so you can get to grips with it and start to just see how useful it can be. Now that I've got a bunch of things set up already, I think I'm definitely just gonna leave my keyboard plugged in and start using it as a controller. So as I said, go and check it out. I'll leave details in the description so you can go and download it. And of course, go and give this man some money. And also if you want to suggest some features, then you can go over to his site and do it there. He's got various options on here where you can start donating to try and essentially vote for the features that you want. So already people have been chipping in for the Windows version and I'm sure that will definitely get there eventually. Okay, so that's it. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.